Hello again, this is Beth Holtzman with UVM Extension's New Farmer Project, and we're back with Julia Shanks to continue our conversation about bookkeeping basics for farm businesses. It's all yours, Julia. Great, thank you. Um, so in this final section, we're going to talk about bookkeeping basics. We're going to talk about reading your numbers. So we've talked a lot about the input and you know making sure that you have a good system of tracking all of your transactions, and we're going to do a little review of the output. So the goal of this section is to have a basic understanding of the financial statements. We'll talk about a few key concepts. And then finally, we'll talk about the differences between profit and cash flow. And we alluded to that in the first section, and we're going to drill down a little bit more here. So we talked about the financial statements, and they're a summary of all the transactions in our business to convey information. And we have the income statement, which summarizes our business operations. We have the balance sheet, which is a summary of what we have and how we got it. And we have the statement of cash flows, which is a summary of how cash moved in and out of our business. Now here's an example of an income statement and you know, more or less pulled from QuickBooks. We have our revenue, our cost of goods sold, so it looks like this farmer perhaps bought in some produce for resale. We have our direct operating expenses, and we can see you know, sub subtotals of direct operating, payroll, general and admin, repairs and maintenance. So that nesting that we talked about in the last two sections allows us to categorize and see you know, in broad strokes, what are we spending on our basic operations and you know, versus general and admin, et cetera. And then we have depreciation, interest, and taxes. So this is a basic income statement. Now, when we look at our income statement, we want to look at trends. You know, we want to look at, you know, how did we do this year? You know, we can see, oh, look, we had a net profit of $11,000. Great. This is where we spent our money. But it's also helpful, like, you know, okay, we spent $51,000 on payroll. But what, what did we spend the previous year? And what is that trend? So, you know, here we can see a trend and we see the trend is going up, but, you know, should we be worried? Well, it, it really depends on how revenue was, you know, I mean, payroll went up. Well, did revenue go up? Oh, look, revenue went up too. So, you know, maybe we're not concerned, but we want to start to give the numbers context. And we do that by what's called common sizing numbers. And we want to look at all the numbers relative to revenue. So yeah, payroll is going up and we're like, okay, well, revenue is going up, so we're not too worried. But if we look at payroll as a percentage of revenue, we can see that payroll in year one is 31% of revenue, in year two, it's 32%, and in year three, it's 33%. So not only is payroll going up, it's going up at a greater pace than the revenue is going up. So when we when we look at our financial statements, number one, we wanna look at trends, but we also wanna look at numbers relative to revenue. And that's what's gonna allow us to compare year over year and how we're doing. The other thing to remember is that net income does not equal cash flow. And just because you have a positive income doesn't mean you have cash in the bank. And just because you have cash in the bank does not mean that you have a positive income. And let me give you a couple of examples of this. So number one, you might get a loan. And if you get a loan, that's a cash inflow into your business, but that is not revenue. <clears throat> and it should not show up on your income statement. It will show up on your balance sheet as a liability. As you pay back the loan, you're gonna have a cash flow out of your business. Now there's two parts of your loan payback. One is the principal and the other is the interest. So if you're making a monthly payment of, let's say, $1,000, $800 may be going to pay down the balance of the loan, $200 is going to uh, interest. Now, certainly interest is an expense, but that $800 is not an expense. You're paying down the loan. So you have cash outflow, but not necessarily an expense. We talked about in the second section, accrual accounting, where you may have revenue if you delivered produce, you might have revenue, but if your customers don't pay you 
at the moment, you don't necessarily have cash in the bank. If you buy a tractor, you've made an investment in your business, you have a cash outflow, but not an expense. And finally, if you record depreciation, depreciation is a non-cash expense. So you'll see the expense on your income statement, but you won't have the cash outflow. So it's really important that you look at both income and cash flow because they're both equally important. I don't want to suggest one is more important than the other. Um, you really need to be tracking both, but recognizing that one is not the other. And the balance sheet can actually be a great tool in helping you understand uh, your cash flow relative to your profits. So you can see, for example, on this income, or excuse me, you can see on this balance sheet, this farm has $18,000 worth of accounts receivable. And what that means is that they had revenue of $18,000 that they have not been paid yet for. So it's an easy way to help manage cash flow to see what's coming down the pike soon. Likewise, we can see in the liabilities, accounts payable is what we owe our vendors. If you know that uh, we went to the hardware store and the guy, the hardware manager said, don't worry, pay me next month, $11,000 of don't worry, pay me next month, we can see that on our balance sheet. If we have credit card debt, if we have taxes payable, if we owe federal taxes or payroll taxes, we can see that. So we can see what debt we have coming up down the pike. So the balance sheet can help us manage cash even um, when it's different than our profits. And in this example, we have current liabilities of $20,000 and even though we only have 18,000 in the bank, which isn't quite enough to cover the current liabilities, we can see that we have the accounts receivable coming in. So we've got 18,000 of cash that we're likely we're gonna, we're gonna get most of it um, in the next month, depending on how we're managing our customers. So the balance sheet can be a really helpful tool in terms of bridging the gap between cash flow and profits. And the balance sheet is something that QuickBooks will generate for you. If you're using Excel, you're gonna to have to manually track your accounts receivable. You'll need to manually track your accounts payable, but it can help bridge that gap between cash flow and income and profits. So in summary, thank you for joining us for this four part series, but in summary, good, book, good bookkeeping, it does take effort, but your efforts will be rewarded. You'll be able to better manage your cash. You'll be able to better understand your profitability. You'll be able to better make decisions on whether or not you can afford to make a purchase or enter a new market. All that information is in your numbers and the bookkeeping system will help you stay organized so you can answer the questions you have about your business. It's important that you find a system that works for you and gives you the answers that you need. And when we started this series, we talked about some of the questions that you have about your business. And as you set up your system, think about the questions that you have and the answers that you wanna know and make sure that you're setting up your system in a way that's gonna give you those answers. Certainly QuickBooks is a standard solution for many farmers and it's what most of my clients use, but for a beginning farmer, especially it can be overwhelming. So start small, start with something that you can manage and then work up as you crave more information about your numbers. And the more you look at your numbers, the more you're gonna understand and the easier it's gonna be to set up a system that works for you. So thank you so much for having me. Again, feel free to reach out to me, Kelly or Beth, if you meet, need more support or visit our websites and wishing you good success and financial sustainability. Thank you so much, Julia. This was wonderful. Thanks for everyone for joining us.